the, um, first of all, for some of you that have met some high performance people like are on those, uh, my influential walls, the public persona that they put forward to other people is different than the real them. They say fuck, shit, cunt, and they use all those words, but when they're in front of shareholders or when they're on television, etc., or being interviewed, they don't. Um, so, the, and one of the th things that early on when I started coaching 21 years ago, and when I, I went to seminars and I followed people around, uh, and then I also went to see where they lived, etc., when I could do an expose in 60 minutes for where you think these guys live, and they live in fucking shacks, caravans, uh, they live with their mother. But anyway, that's a whole other story. And they all, they, most of which have no fucking money, but that's a whole other story. Is that they don't walk their talk. And I do walk my talk. And more importantly, forget the fact that I'm different than all the other coaches, is that the high performance people that I'm training you to be like talk that way. They all talk that way. And just, and just as I've said before in the seminar, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Just because you haven't heard them talk that way. We had somebody here who, who has been around one of the high-performance people that's an influencer on my um, wall, uh, who's English, and he, he's heard them talk like that, you know. Uh, but most of you haven't been around anybody that's a high-performance. I mean, super high-performance individual. Uh, but they talk that way. And I want you to understand, and I don't want you to be shocked, and more importantly, I don't want you to be taken advantage of because somebody else is talking in a way that makes you so uncomfortable that it's so up outside your comfort zone that you don't know how to react. Um, but this is the real world. This seminar is the real motherfucking world. This is how it fucking is. Now, I look at Bert and I think of the Sopranos, but the Sopranos um, was fairly realistic, except they weren't saying, fuck, shit, cunt, we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to stick this up his fucking ass, and we're going to cut his balls off, and then uh, shove him up his wife's snatch, because that's the real fucking world. Life's life. Yeah, that's life. Um, and uh, somebody asked me, this is slightly smaller than the one that I used to jump on the bear with. This is slightly smaller than the one that I killed the big 600 pound boar with. Sli slightly smaller. The, um, but this is the real world. The real world. And um, nobody that has left here that has been super successful has experienced anything different. Has any experienced anything different? Now you'll ask yourself, well, my parents didn't talk that way. Well, I'll put it another way. How, ma how many people in this room, growing up, heard, not necessarily their mother, their father, talk in a rude and vulgar manner? 80%. Did you hear that, YouTubers? 80%. And when you ask your parents now, like my father, God rest his soul, he has no recollection. He has, like the fog of war, he doesn't remember. Because we, have, we all have selective memory, especially when you get older. Uh, the, um, so we saw our parents, and in some cases we even saw our, our mother. But I'm not going to ask you that. Because uh, mums are special, okay? But if your dad talked that way for 80% of you, and in some of your cases, your father may be edging on high performance, uh, why would you be shocked now, London Reelers, YouTubers, to hear me talk that way? Why? Because you've become accustomed, your comfort zone is that you're dealing with people that accept bullshit, and if you accept bullshit in life, you most probably accept defeat. And that's not what this deal is all about. When you get out there, we are, we are operating, it's called a war plan, not an action plan. It's a war plan, and we uh, defeat and losing is not an option. It's not an option. 
And if, when you go out there and you act as if you had no limits to your abilities, that's exactly what will happen. You'll succeed. And when we talked about gold yesterday, you'll succeed beyond, beyond your wildest expectations. But if you don't have wild expectations, I assure you, you won't fucking su succeed beyond them. And if you have a goal to make a half a million euros or a million pounds or whatever the number, if that's the number, I assure you, you're not going to do any better than that. And that's why when we talked about goals, I said bodacious, etc., etc., outrageous, you know, beyond your uh, wildest expectations. And uh, which is the, the antithesis of, um, of uh, what, what we're taught. And believe me, I was taught that the same as you. Keep your head down, stay out of, well, in my case, when they told me stay out of trouble, they were serious because I was always in trouble. Not always, not, not every fucking day I wasn't, but every week I was in trouble for sure. And I was t reminding my cousin that I went to have lunch with a few months ago that uh, one time I, uh, I, I don't know if I hit the teacher, uh, but anyway, I, I was in kindergarten, just out of kindergarten, maybe the first grade, and I ran into the, um, uh, they were chasing me down the hall. Now, just chasing kid, you know? I'm running, because uh, uh, in those days you had corporal punishment. They could hit the kids. Uh, and so I ran into um, uh, a lady, the ladies' room, uh, and uh, I locked myself in the stall. And they were trying to, every time they tried to, they couldn't open the stall without breaking it. So every time somebody tried to get in the stall, I'd kick them. And so finally, they're trying to get a hold of my dad, who was a, a policeman, and they couldn't get a hold of him. And then they're trying to get a hold of my mother, and for whatever reason, they couldn't get a hold of her. So his, my cousin's mother, my aunt, came to school. So I'm locked in this thing for a couple of hours, and she comes in. And of course, uh, I could do no wrong. I'm an angel. Oh, what did they do to you, Danny? What did they do to your poor baby? I'm going to tell your father. Then you're going to be in big trouble when I tell his father. And so then she takes me like, it's like in a movie, you know, she's, we walk out to the car and I'm going. <laughs> so I, I wasn't such a nice kid. I, I'm sure you uh, YouTubers are much nicer and had a much uh, greater, um, uh, more, uh, less stressful time when they were kids. Uh, how was um, dinner last night? Did you go to a different place or the same place? Different. different. Was, was it better or worse than the first one? Where'd you go? Oh, brew house. Yeah, that's why I got hit with a fucking um, beer bottle. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one that's right near the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's a pretty good place. And they um, they used to well, I don't know. They just, the fish and chips. The fish is two inches larger than the plate, and uh, potatoes like this. And it's uh, they certainly. Um, uh, and they don't have ca calorie, can calorie counting on the menus, for sure, for sure. And Scotland's got one of the uh, worst cholesterol uh, problems. And I think I told you, Glasgow, the average age for a guy is 53. 53. The rest of the world is 75, 80, 85. But Glasgow is 53. And uh, they have, uh, but fried Mars bars are good. And, and uh, there's a lot of good shit, unfortunately. <laughs> And you wash it down with a pint or two and a few drams. The drams are shots of whiskey. Uh, so, um, but at least they die happy. They die bloody happy. Okay, well, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Now, today we're going to talk and we're going to have our first role play about how you get a dream team member, how you get a, uh, a chairman, uh, how um, you um, um, look better than you are, perception is reality, uh, and um, how, because the dream team is, is, the, is more or less the basis of the, uh, of the program, because they're the ones that will give you uh, additional credibil credibility, added credibility, when you go out and you're looking for acquisitions and when you're looking for finance, etc. They'll look at that dream team and they'll look through the profiles and say, Jesus, Bert must be somebody. I mean, we must have missed something in Bert's profile. We must have overlooked something that these other fine gentlemen and women have seen that we haven't seen. So he will, he will um, grow in their estimation. Um, so, fuck those motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. You trick fuck them. Uh, but we're not, we're not stealing from them, and it's moral and ethical, but we're leading them to believe that we're better 
as individuals, not as human beings. So I don't want to get all esoteric, tree-hugging fuck. But as we're better than we are based on our previous experience. Because many of you, or most of the people that come to the seminar, don't really have any m and experience. They don't have any of that. So, but the people that we surround ourselves with, the people that we ask to get on our bus, just like Oprah Winfrey says, are people that have this kind of, exp- this kind of experience and that we lean on. We lean on. Now, I, I've told, uh, I told a couple guys last year, we get, you, you got some great guys on your board, but if you don't call them, you don't go by and see them, and you don't ask them for input, what the fuck, other than the, 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 the thing that you send out to financial institutions, you look good, you're not gaining from their experience. And the idea behind building a dream team is gaining from experience. Now, O.J. Simpson's dream team got him off for murder, for those of you that remember, about 20 years ago. That's where dream team got its popularity, but I was using it way before that. He had three or four, he had uh, uh, Johnny Cochran, Kardashian, and I forget who the other guy was, and um, I can't think, anyway, that dream team did its job for O.J., okay? Your dream team will do the job for you. Now, I don't expect them to be getting you off a murder like they did OJ, but it'll be, you know, and I use that as a metaphor, but it'll be equivalent. Because anybody that had a half a fucking brain knew that OJ Simpson was guilty. But that dream team, with all their worldly experience, and that, and instead of M&A experience, it was litigation experience, criminal litigation experience, got him to go free. So just think about that when you think about how uh, it's a pain in the ass to get the dream team, it's a pain in the ass to do this. Just think, they can do for you what they did, that dream team did for O.J. Simpson. Now in some cases, you, people are going to say, boy, they, these guys, this guy's killing them. They're going to get you out for, not for physical murder, but they're going to get, help you fulfill your dreams and it'll be no less dramatic than when Johnny Cochran and Kardashian et al. got O.J. Simpson off for murder. By the way, I'm not suggesting murder. So don't send me a bunch of fucking emails and, and, and about, you know, well, why are you making that example with O.J. Simpson? Although, YouTubers. Okay, any questions before we get started? Okay, bye-bye, YouTube. See you later.